Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It's Fatmata here from Traditionally Inspired Meaningful Art and today I wanted to share with you some of my upcoming sewing plans. I'll save for the month of November through to the early parts of December. So let's jump right in. I'll share with you what I'm wearing. I'm currently wearing a self-drafted dress that I made back I think in January or so of 2021. So it has a sort of sheared panel right here in the bodice after this little frill that I added, um, billowy-ish <laughs> sleeves, as billowy as I could get with the remaining fabric. And you can see I have some contrasting fabric here on the cuff, which is also shirred. And it has a panel of that same contrasting fabric as the second layer as well as the bottom layer there. I am really pleased with it and it is one that I appreciate the fact that I sort of figured out how to do this on my own and tried a new technique which was shirring at the time and was able to make it work. I think I would definitely do things differently if I were to do this again and it also taught me that I love a good pie crust little collar there. So that was a lot of fun. As I recently did my closet switch over to my autumn winter wardrobe, I was able to kind of test out some outfit ideas and things like that and come up with a short list of like would really like to have pieces in my wardrobe that I thought would just go with quite a few things that I already have and intend to wear this season. So that short list included a black midi skirt, a navy flowy midi or like knee length dress, a black midi dress as well, and a white button up layering dress and a white layering top. Many of these I had refashioning in mind when coming up with them and some are going to be full-on just new makes so I'll talk a little bit about the refashions and the things that I've already <laughs> done so for the white button-up layering dress I have already made that and I'll pop in an image here I took one of my husband's old men's shirts and downsized it in the arms and the bust to make it fit me a bit better added a panel of like white knit fabric to the center to elongate it and then attach the bottom to that um, piece and it allowed me to extend it a little bit and get the shirt tail bottom that I wanted at that midi length so that if I'm wearing it with really tall like knee high boots you just see a peak of that at the bottom there and it's meant to be a layering piece so then I would layer maybe a knee length or so any of the very few knee length sort of dresses that I have in my stash on top of it. So that's the intended use and I was able to make that. I also had a white button up shirt that I had had for many years now over probably seven to eight years but I did realize that I could really benefit from having like a button up shirt that I only use for the purposes of layering if I have a sweater and just wanted a collar and maybe the cuff to peek through but I wanted a material for the body of it that was going to be really comfortable that I could tuck in that wouldn't shift around on me or show like button marks down the front. So I decided this was a good um, shirt to kind of upcycle to do that and I did. I just cut it off um, at a point that I thought was appropriate and then added that same sort of white. It was almost like a lining material knit actually because it's a little bit slippery which I like and it's very easy to tuck in under things, wear a sweater over it and layer nicely and I don't feel like I have a ton of bulk or discomfort with the shirt sort of moving around on me because of that fitted nature of the knit so it worked out really well so those were two really quick easy wins and I did that on the day that I attended a virtual sewing uh, social so that was really nice additionally I wanted the black midi skirt so I will show you I have this black dress might be hard to pick up um, but this is a Butterick pattern. It is Butterick 6705 and it is made out of this poly sort of crepe fabric. It does have a bit of stretch to the fabric as well and if you can see there hopefully you can faintly see that it has this almost like wood grain or like tiger 
sort of print on it. Very faint, and but I think um, nice because it adds just a little bit of dimension to it. Now, I have not been in love with this dress. I think I've worn it out only once. And it's quite, I guess I would consider it unfinished. Like I never fully hemmed the bottom. I just surged it at the ends. And I, I, I don't, I don't love it. I don't care for it any particular way. So what I think I'm going to do is take the skirt portion and then create that midi length skirt. Luckily for me, I do have more of this fabric left. I picked this up in the dead stock section at G Street Fabric maybe a couple of years ago and I have enough here where I could add another possibly like ruffle to the bottom of this to make it a midi length dress that has just one gathered ruffle panel at the bottom with possibly a waistband and or I would use sort of the soft elastic in the waistband as a facing that sort of thing and just close it up with a zipper in the back then with the top portion of this because that would leave me with that I could foresee myself using you know because it has sort of that empire bust line here kind of goes up into a peak can see that I think I might cut it off since it's gonna be cut off already I might just add like a peplum to the bottom so I can have a top as well as a skirt that's my hope but I hope to refashion this dress that I currently do not wear and hopefully get a piece that I will get a lot of use out of in my wardrobe as far as the floaty navy midi dress I had this fabric in my stash and it is a crinkle rayon that I also picked up at G Street Fabric. Some of the crinkle texture is a little bit uh, less visible right now because I ironed this fabric prior to making it. And I have already started working on it actually. I attended my younger sister's like birthday party yesterday and we were all intended to wear shades of blue and I had the bright idea on the day of and I was like, let me see if I can get a project started I didn't end up wearing this dress obviously it still has pins in it but I already was intending to make this dress which is why I was like let me see if I can get it done so no love lost because I was already gonna work on this but it is s9225 again that's s9225 and I like just how simple this is my dress is going to look nothing like this but I often use this pattern because I like the this neckline option that they have where it's sort of cut on the bias and it folds over on itself I really enjoy that I like that it's gathered at the neckline so sometimes I add additional fullness by just moving the pattern piece further from the center front and just increasing the amount of gathers so that I have more volume in the bottom. I often use this flutter sleeve even though I make mine super long. Why I like it is because it is a single piece raglan sleeve whereas the other sleeve that's included in this pattern is a two part sleeve. And I just don't like fiddling with the extra seam so I often cut the flutter sleeve. So that's what I did here. It was five pieces total, two sleeves, a front, a back, and the neck. So effectively it was quite easy except for the fact that I was dealing with a fabric that was a little bit tricky in that I picked this up at the dead stock section at G Street and it had some nicks and cuts in it and stuff that I needed to avoid so I couldn't just fold over the fabric and cut it out the way that I wanted. I had to sort of cut everything out on a single layer which was annoying but we did it in the end. I'm working on it. I have the sleeves on. I have the body done. I am pinning together the neck band. I've made my rouleau loops which I think are far too big but we'll deal with that later and then I'll have to figure out the hem I don't know if there was something wrong in my cutting most likely it was but I definitely have like a big gap from the front to the back that's not the same <laughs> so I'm going to have to wear this and figure out how to hem it appropriately because that hem is all wonky I struggled a little bit with the cutting out of this and I think I was paying for that then when I was actually constructing it but I feel like we will get it done in the end and it's just going to be a really cool piece to layer other stuff on top of. I'm happy to be working on it and I hope to get that done. 
not much left i already have navy serger in the over locker so i might be working on that quite soon for the black dress i have this textured fabric i love textures particularly when we're going into um, the fall and winter but this is such a beautiful fabric I don't know the exact fabric content I'll be honest with you this is another dead stock G Street fabric find and I have a lot of this fabric so I'm excited to get to play with it and work with it I think because of that crinkle texture it does have a bit of like mechanical elasticity in it just because it's pre-crinkled but I am tinkering I have not landed on what I want to do with this and I have two different options maybe you can help me in voting for this so one of the patterns that I've wanted to revisit for a long time is simplicity 9231 I'd previously made a navy blouse out of this pattern and I adore it I cut the wrong size so I have since then purchased this pattern again side cut into the tissue paper it's fine and I want to actually work on this and see if I could possibly extend it to be a dress I remember when I purchased this fabric I remember when I purchased this pattern and saw the amount of ease that it has built in it's an incredible amount particularly by the time you get to the waist and the hips etc and I thought to myself if you just elongate that you would have a fabulous dressed dress so this is one of the options it gives a really nice clean high neckline I think it could be really nice I could also change up the sleeve and do something a bit more billowy if I'd like that's one option Another one that I was considering is to do a mashup of sorts. So I was thinking about doing the bodice of B6705 um, that gives me that empire waist there that really has beautiful shaping and nice sleeves. I would probably go with sleeves from view A because the edge of this black fabric is already pre like turned up. I wouldn't have to hem it I think if I can make use of the very bottom hem there for the bottom of the dress and the sleeves that's my hope and I would then pair that with the like skirt piece right here of S9702 so I would probably use the skirt of view A I'm assuming if I want it to be like knee length or so that's my current idea is like the bodice here because it'd give me that higher neckline but this would give me gathering under the bust right and more fullness throughout whereas this is a bit more fit and flow and I don't know that I want that fitted fabric look for this particular dress so that is the second option so either do a mashup or revisit a pattern that I've wanted to uh, revisit for some time. What are your thoughts? Please let me know in the comments down below for this black pre sort of crinkled fabric. What would you do? I would love to love to love to know. But that's my black midi dress that I'm hoping to work on. Because we had already been talking about refashions, I just want to go through a quick roundup of other things that I've taken out of my two men pile that I'm hoping to get started on working on. Because I know that I'm going to have a black project in the work with that midi dress, I pulled out a number of things that are in my stash that go with that coloring so that while I have the thread and the serger cones in, I can really work on them. This is a pair of like fitted trousers, jeggings sort of thing. It's a Mimi G pattern. I'll put the number up on the screen. I made this last year and it's in this faux leather fabric. It's like a matte faux leather. I really like it. Excuse the wrinkles. It has this like pin tuck detail in the front that I really love. The highest of waistlines. I think this is like two or three inches above the waist. It's amazing. I don't know that the fit is exactly what I want but the main issue is the waist is, is snatched and I just need a bit more give at this current moment um, so what I'm going to do is actually remove this waistband and I am going to use some soft 
elastic um, one and a half inch elastic that I've recently purchased and I'm gonna put that as the facing instead of this woven and interfaced facing that I currently have I think that's gonna give me just a bit of give this fabric does have a bit of stretch to it so having the elastic instead of this interfaced facing um, in a woven fabric I think is definitely going to add to that wearability and I'm looking forward to that I want to figure out how I want to finish the bottom. I've never actually hemmed it, and I don't know if I'm gonna turn it over and stitch it down. I don't know if I'm going to hand tack it. I have no idea or do a blind hem on my sewing machine. I haven't figured that out yet, but that those are the two things I'd like to do. Figure out the bottom and change out the waistband like facing piece to be elastic instead. You may remember this amazing skirt that I made and it's been really sad that I haven't been able to wear. For whatever reason, the zipper just completely got stuck on me and I remember when I was working on this project I had used a really gunky tape um, on it that I thought was like washable sewing tape. It wasn't and I don't know if that sort of gunked up the invisible zip that I had in this. Either way, it needed to be cut out, so I've already begun <laughs> trying to get started on this. I just removed the zipper to begin with, and I just need to replace the zipper, to be honest. I'm also considering undoing the waistband and considering that elastic thing again. I don't know. Does everything need to be elasticated? Probably not, but it would just make it a bit more comfortable to wear. So I will see if I do that. Otherwise, it's just insertion of another uh, invisible zip. That's what we have so that I can wear the skirt again. I think this is the season. Like this is the season for this skirt. I made it in spring. Got a great, you know, wear out of it. Um, but this is definitely the season. So I want to have it back in my stash. It's a poly like sat teen fabric from Joanne Fabrics and I have this blouse from Ann Taylor I used to work at Ann Taylor for like a year when I had an internship in DC working with nonprofits it's more like an apprenticeship anyway so I worked at Ann Taylor and while I was there during my time I picked up some really fabulous pieces uh, many of which I still have till this day if they fit like my style meaning if they weren't short skirts that I have since gotten rid of. Anyway, this blouse is silk. It's a silk blouse. It has this navy and white or navy and cream pinstripe. I washed it even though I wasn't supposed to, so it has like this little baby run in the back. Learned my lesson there. Yeah, but um, I still love this blouse and want to wear it. Now my issue is, and this is going to look terrible but it happens I'm a chocolate woman and things whether it's sweat whether it's whatever stains etc like I don't know what this stain was like coffee or something um, I just hate that this happened to the collar and it's hard to get out like I've washed it I've done many different things the cuff also I've had like so many issues with the cuff the the buttons came off I have ink splotches here just so many different things right I just had to tack this down at one point because I lost all the buttons so what I need to do is replace the cuff and replace the collar I had done one of the upcycles that I told you about earlier um, left me with this piece of polyester fabric but it is a very similar sort of cream color I might use this or I might look through my stash and find something else that is a decent match and replace those things because I really like to have that silk shirt back in my wardrobe. So those are my refashions that I plan to work on. So I'll tell you uh, very quickly about three things that I probably have mentioned to you in a previous video if you've watched to this point. I have two patterns that I'd previously cut out that I want to complete. So let's begin with McCall's 7476 and I'm working on view E, this long line duster. I have it cut out in two different fabrics, first of which is this wool knit fabric in the dark 
chocolate brown here and I'm looking forward to having this as a long line cardigan. Secondly, I have it cut out of this sort of um, tan or very light oatmeal colored ribbing. So these two are cut out and ready to go and I'm going to begin with the dark brown one because that I believe I cut out correctly, had no issues with it. So with the oatmeal colored one, unfortunately I was playing fabric chicken, fabric chicken and lost terribly. So I brought out this oatmeal colored, it's like a, it's a rayon viscose linen cotton blend, something something bizarre and beautiful like that. It feels amazing and it is in like spot on almost the exact same color. So I have the facing piece here and I'm going to cut it out of that woven fabric. <sighs> Mixing a woven and a knit. Listen, I just need to try and make it work now that I made that boo-boo. So I hope to get that sorted. I cut out this bomber jacket as well. It is Simplicity 9190. It is a men's wear bomber jacket and I cut out the view that the model is wearing view B and I'm really really excited about this. I wanted an oversized like I borrowed this for my husband's closet sort of feel so I went with this men's pattern and cut out a size that would sort of like be my husband's size actually. I sized up a little bit from what would be technically my size and here is the fabric I'm using it is this gorgeous tapestry fabric that I had in my stash and you might have seen this fabric if you watched my um, fabric organization video but I'm so excited to finally be using it up I cut it very strategically so I have things like centered and you know all of that so that it's nice and beautiful I put Taylor's tacks throughout that I just took one out when I opened that fabric unfortunately if I love this pattern I already have another fabric earmarked for it and that is this dark floral um, upholstery fabric actually it is a Waverly print and it has this beautiful floral print on it it's like photo realistic it's very very nice and I have two yards right here. I have another cut that's four yards um, still in my stash. And I have this faux Sherpa that I got from the sort of remnant section at um, Joanne. And this fabric is from G Street Fabrics in their like upholstery section. It was on the clearance table, so I scooped that up. But I would sort of put the Sherpa on the inside. So this one I could see me putting like a fluffier lining on the inside, which is why I'm sort of back and forth between the navy one do I need to make that super plush as well if that could be a more all season sort of thing so if I like it if it works out I would love to be able to make it out of the dark floral also but that's project for another day so those are ideas that I have of sort of um, snuggly things that would be really nice layering pieces for this fall winter. Moving on, I'd really like to make a blouse or a button up shirt for myself. I had over the summer used Butterick 6422, this vintage pattern here that I thrifted a while ago and I really, really enjoyed it. I did make the largest size in this pack, which is a size 16. And I think moving forward, I would probably size down to the size 12 for the arms and the bust and then grade out to the 16 for the hip. I really think that it could be lovely and very wearable and versatile in my wardrobe to make a nice oversized boxy layerable top out of this colored fabric. So I am hopeful to get that made up. Additionally, I have really wanted a black blouse of some sort particularly a black button up shirt so I don't know that I would necessarily use this same pattern exactly and I'm kind of going back and forth between it but I did pick up this brushed sort of rayon twill fabric from Joanne in the remnant section I only have one yard of it so I either have to find more or figure out how to pair it with something else in my stash to make this work but I also have this really beautiful lace fabric in my stash. 
I picked this up in the dead stock section at G Street and if you can tell I don't know if you will be able to but it's like velvet lace it's kind of incredible so I have this yardage of it and I could see me incorporating this into a sleeve somehow for this blouse that might look nicer if it's just a blouse and not necessarily a button-up shirt or I could still incorporate it even if it is a button-up I'm not sure but I think the black of this rayon fabric is rich enough to kind of be accompanied with that velvet I've had I have other black fabrics in my stash that I keep trying to pair with this lace fabric but every time I put them together it makes the black of the fabric feel really washed out so I'm trying to find something that's deep and rich enough in black that could pair well with this and this has been probably one of the better options that I've seen then I am also thinking so this is a lot of button-up shirts but I had recently picked up this remnant um, like denim fabric at Joanne in this dark wash it's a four ounce denim and it's 100% cotton and I have a number of other 100% cotton four ounce denims in my stash in various shades of blue so I've always been curious if I could do like a color blocked denim patchworky sort of top I don't know I don't know I don't know I think um, there is a knack for doing that I would just have to look at Pinterest and see other examples of color blocked button-up shirts to see exactly where to put all the colors and stuff but I could use the vintage oversized you know shirt pattern I could find a different button-up shirt pattern in my stash but that is another sort of option so yeah a black blouse of some sort possibly a button-up um, the tan I think those are more priority the denim one I think I can make any time of the year so I'm not really too um, pressed to get it done immediately but was something that I just pulled out of the stash as a contender moving on I do have some things that I would like to make for my kiddos and I have brought those down first and foremost Another remnant that I picked up was this brushed cotton. It's in a mini houndstooth. And in my stash already, I had this check fabric here in the same black and white in the same brushed cotton. So both of these are from Joanne Fabrics. Um, and I could see myself using some piping detail to sort of mix these two prints together. And I had picked up this lovely sweet dress. It is Simplicity 9830. Again, that's 9830. I fell in love with it. I like that it has this yoke detail, and I think that would allow me to highlight those two prints really beautifully and do a really nice big sleeve, just like this little lady here with some tights. I think she would be good to go for the autumn. So that's what I'm thinking out of these two. In addition, and probably most importantly, my daughter asked me for a robe like with her own words said can you make me a robe and specifically out of this fabric so i had taken her to joanne fabrics with me when i was going to pick up some thread we passed by the remnant fabric section and she saw this cute halloween cat print with ghosts and pumpkins and candy corn and bats and skeletons and she was like can you make me a robe out of that it like she said the word fabric and she's understanding that mommy makes things and actually wanted me to make her something. She's four years old, if you didn't know. And it just warmed my heart and I was like, bring bring the fabric girl, bring it. We were able to snag this for $3 because the remnants on that particular day were 75% off when they're usually 50% off. And then this base of fabric was Additionally, it was on sale in the store anyways. So it was just reduction on reduction. So we got one yard for $3, which for Joanne is a steal. So that was really exciting. And the fact that she picked it out herself. So one yard for a robe, we're gonna have to make this work, okay? And I pulled out two, two patterns from my stash that I think could work for this. You have this vintage Butterick 3042, and this is a children's, like an entire set, right? Pajamas, you have the um, booties too, which I'm definitely going to make um, with scrap fabrics and different things, and the robe. So 
The robe on this pattern, I think, is actually, it says it takes up about a little over two yards. So I'm going to have to like open this packaging up and actually see the pattern pieces and figure out why. Why, why, why? Secondly, you have this option, which is Simplicity 1572. So this is an older pattern for sure, and the robe here has a hood, so that's different. In addition, the tie is sort of like stitched into it, which I like that detailing. And this one is calling for just under two yards for it, and it's raglan sleeves. So a little bit different, you know, the two various patterns. So what's really going to be the deciding factor is what I have enough fabric for. Luckily, as you already know, I do have that black Sherpa fabric. I can always add additional fabric, black ribbing or, you know, other fabric to kind of finish this robe out and still make the colors work. So I'm not too fussed about that, but I will sort of see which would be the best pattern for me to use. Having the hood option could be nice as well. I then have this buffalo check, like the red and black buffalo check, faux Sherpa fabric that I have been just picking up from the dead sock section at Joann's as I see them as well. And I decided if I make my daughter one, I'm going to have to make my son one as well. So I pulled this out, earmarked it for him because I didn't already have plans to use this fabric. And I think that would be a really good use of it. Oh, it's going to be so cuddly warm for them. So I'm excited to make that. While I had those patterns out, I went ahead and pulled this fabric that I had picked up at Joann's um, maybe a couple of months ago, and I love it. I got it in the last chance section, I think, or I think it's the last chance section, or just on the floor. I'm not sure, but I got it at a reduced price, and I was excited about it. I've been looking at this fabric since it hit the stores, I think like last fall season so not this one and it has just the most luscious backing to it it's like fleeced it's brushed but it's super soft it's dreamy honestly as a fabric I believe I have two yards of this if I'm not mistaken so it can make quite a bit of things for my daughter and I plan to make her hopefully something that like zips up uh, maybe like a hoodie and then some leggings because this fleece backed fabric in the winter months I think is going to serve her well and then with the remnants of the fabric I could save it because there will be other winters hopefully right for us to make use of this but it's such a good knit as well I've already pre-washed this and I didn't see a lot of you know pilling or something that I would be nervous about so I actually like even the front face of this and it could also be any one of these things because for me this is just a sweater and a jogger set right it's pajamas technically but it's just a sweater and a jogger set and then similarly with this one this is a really nice raglan sleeve sweater with a ribbed collar and possible ribbing on the cuff if you show if you so choose so I am really happy to have both of these patterns out and I think once I get to tracing them out I probably will trace these because they both go to size six and my kiddos are four and five or I might just cut the size six and just like grade down while I'm cutting out the fabric um, that might be my little hack to save myself a little bit of time we shall see but that is my like fall planning if you will and there might be things that pop up that I'm really excited about and that sneak their way in we shall see I also anticipate doing some like finishing and finessing of garments probably in December um that is my hope I still have things cut out from before I went to Guinea that I have not revisited so we shall see about that but this right now are things top of mind that I actually could see myself utilizing in my wardrobe and being really happy with so I wanted to share those with you that is all for me today please let me know in the comments down below what make you're most excited to see and if you have responses to any of the questions that I've asked throughout please let me know your thoughts on them it's so great to have you here and I hope to talk to you soon stay creative folks bye bye